Hey guys, today we're going to be doing some basic uh, compositing inside of Blender. Uh, now this is all the basic beginner uh, compositing that you'll need to know uh, in order to do some VFX work. Now before we get started, if you want to work along with us, uh, the download link for the footage uh, along with my blend file is also in the description below. So if you want to, uh, go ahead and download that. Anyways, jumping on into Blender, let's uh, go ahead and go up to our compositing tab. Uh, we're going to hit use notes. We actually don't need the render layers, uh, so we can just get rid of that. Uh, first, we're going to uh, import in our movie clip. So just add a movie clip node like that uh, and then open it up in the link in the description. Now with our movie clip up, uh, we actually need to add some add-ons. Uh, so let's come up to edit, preferences, uh, go to the add-on section, uh, and then we just need to type in node wrangler. Uh, you just want to make sure that this is checked right here. Now let's go ahead and exit out of this. Uh, now we actually want to composite in some explosions and also a plane flying over. Uh, so first of all, let's do the explosion. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the explosion by adding a image node like this. Uh, then we wanna go ahead and go to open and then navigate to wherever uh, that image file is. So for our first big explosion, we're gonna go to explosion one. And then once you're in here, you can just press A to select all these and then open image. You should see that it automatically sets up a image sequence right here with the uh, correct amount of frames. So that is looking good. Uh, now, if we actually want to combine these two, uh, we need what's called a alpha overnode. Uh, this basically is a layer system like in uh, After Effects or uh, anything like that. So in order to add that, let's just go ahead and add. Uh, let's type in alpha over. Uh, we can connect those up here. Whenever you do alpha over, always make sure to check mark this uh, convert pre-multiply. Uh, it just does some weird stuff if you're dealing with the alpha channel. Uh, so now we can plug this uh, little image socket to there and then the movie clip up to our uh, top image socket. And then if we hold shift control and then click right here, uh, we can actually add in a viewer node. Now we can actually see it in our background, but it's too big. So we actually need to zoom out a bit. Uh, so to do that, you can hit V on your keyboard and if you want to zoom in you can just hit alt v and that zooms in okay so you might notice uh one thing the color is actually off and that is actually because uh anything we do in this uh, little compositing tab is actually the standard uh view transform whereas anything you do in the layout uh this 3d viewport is going to be in the filmic color space uh, so let's just go back to compositing. We can change those by going to the render properties all the way down to color management and the view transform. We can change it from filmic to standard. Okay, so now that our color is correct, uh, we can go ahead and see what this looks like. Uh, you will notice that nothing has really changed right here. And that is actually because um, our explosion doesn't really start on the first frame. Uh, it starts a little bit after. So let's go to, let's say 35, just to see how this looks. And now you can see that we actually have our explosion on top of our actual movie clip like that. And you can also uh, scrub throughout and see uh, what that looks like throughout our timeline. Okay, so now that we have our explosion on our actual timeline, uh, you will notice that there are a couple things wrong with it. First, the color is off, uh, so we can change that later. Uh, but also, we need the explosion to kind of be in the background, uh, whereas right now, it's uh, really in the uh, foreground and uh, it doesn't really look that realistic. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually uh, composite this to be uh, b behind these trees and everything. So to do that, we're just going to bring this over. We're going to go ahead and add in a luminance key. Uh, luminance is just the brightness uh, a value of the pixel so white has a uh, higher value whereas uh, darker uh, values like this tree over here have a lower value so let's just go plug in the movie clip image to the image and then the uh, there are two here you can go to the uh, see these by holding shift control clicking uh, we actually want the matte version uh, this is just a black and white uh, thing uh, and then with my testing you basically want just want to test around with this uh, but when I tested I found that uh, both of these should be set to a point uh, 192 uh, and that should give us the result that we're looking for Okay, so as you can see, this is the result that we got uh, for the luminance key. You can see that the sky is all white, which is what we want. And then all the trees and stuff down here are dark and black. Uh, so that is actually looking good. Let's just go ahead and add a quick blur node because uh, we don't want it to be as pixelated as it is right now. Uh, so I'm just gonna change this up twice. Uh, so that is looking better. Now to actually use this mask, uh, we're going to go ahead and plug the image of the blur into our factor of our alpha over. Let's just go uh, click on that and see how that looks. So now you can see this is the result that we got. We can actually see that some of the branches and stuff are actually cutting off our little explosion and making it seem like it's uh, in the background rather than the foreground. So that is looking very good. Uh, however, we do have some actual camera shaking in the actual clip. Uh, so if we actually render it out now, our explosion will look like it's floating in uh, space 
face and everything. Uh, so we actually need to fix that by adding some 2D stabilization. Uh, to do that, we're just going to come to this layout tab right here. Uh, go to the movie clip editor right here. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and open up our footage right here. With our footage now in place, uh, if we come over to the menu, the stabilization menu, uh, we can check mark 2D stabilization that turns it on. We actually need points uh, so that Blender can actually stabilize our footage. Uh, so I am going to zoom in right here. I think, uh, let's come to the first thing. First, I want to turn on normalize. Uh, let's do previous frame for the match. Uh, and then the tra tracking settings extra, let's just uh, change that to a 0.9. Uh, so now I'm going to take some places where there are high contrast. Uh, so for me, right here is a good spot, this little lamppost. And also right here, there's this little uh, leaf on the ground, so we can just select those two. Let's just hit A to select all of those, and then hold Control and press T, uh, and that will start tracking it forward. One thing I forgot to mention is that we actually need to set our start and end keyframe. Uh, right now it's set to uh, on the default value to 1 to 250, but our uh, video actually goes after that. So if we come up here and then set the scene frames, that will change it down here. Uh, then all you need to do is press this one time uh, just to make it go over once. Uh, and then we can just again hold control and T and track to the end of the footage. Okay, so both of our markers made it to the end of the footage. Uh, we can actually come out through here and see that it does indeed track very well. Uh, so now up in this 2D uh, track section, uh, we want to track for rotation also, so that'll add uh, these two down here. Uh, now you want to make sure that both of your tracking dots are selected, which mine are, and then you just want to hit this little plus here and also here. Uh, so that will actually add our 2D stabilization. So now if we come through our clip, we will notice that nothing has actually really changed. And uh, if you want to view how it actually stabilizes your footage, we need to cl come up to this clip display uh, and then show stable. Uh, now if we come through out here, uh, we should see our uh, camera actually moving and everything uh, trying to stabilize our footage. Okay, so that is actually all of the 2D stabilization done. Uh, let's go back into the compositing tab. Uh, now to add in the 2D stabilization, we need to add that into our video clip. Uh, so first, let's just add a stabilized uh, 2D node right here, um, just in between the movie clip and the uh, alpha over. We also need to plug in uh, this image socket into the Luminitsky, like that. Uh, and then we just need to come over here and then open up uh, this little thing and it should add in our 2D stabilization. Now as you can see in the background, we actually have uh, this little uh, mess up here and that's actually uh, what it was stabilizing as we saw before how it was kind of correcting the footage and everything. Uh, we actually don't want that for the final uh, composite. So a way to actually get that back to normal after we do all of the compositing is to go ahead and duplicate this over here uh, after our final alpha overnode. Uh, and then we're just gonna hit this invert uh, button right here. And that should actually uh, invert it back to what it was, uh, but keep everything before uh, stabilized. Okay, so that is looking good now. Now we just have to add in our other explosion and also our plane and do some little compositing there. Uh, so first of all, I just want to go ahead and import both of those. Uh, let's just go ahead and import uh, both our plane and our other explosion. First, I'm going to import our other explosion. So let's go to open. Uh, then you want to locate uh, the explosion 2 folder. So this is folder we want. We are going to click into that head A to uh, select all those. Uh, open the image right there. Um, and then again, uh, just going to come down here for the planes, open, and now we're looking for the uh, planes folder. So here's our plane folder. We can open that and again, A, open image. Okay, so now that we have all those, we can actually play around with some of the timing. Uh, now I know my first explosion, I want to go off at around uh, frame 200. So I'm going to hit 200 on the start frame down here. This basically just tells Blender uh, when we actually want our start frame to be for this uh, animation. Uh, so that is looking good. Now I want to come down here. I, want, I know I want the second explosion to go off around 250. So 250 there. Uh, and then right here, I know that I want the planes to come in around frame 50. Uh, we can always play around with this a little bit more later, but uh, this is just what I like to set. Okay, so like before, we need to combine all these together. Uh, and how we do that is with a alpha overnode. So let's just take our little alpha overnode up here. Uh, we can hit shift D to duplicate and bring that down here. Uh, now we want to combine uh, the two explosions first. So let's just combine those like this. Uh, and then instead of uh, this explosion going into this alpha overnode, we actually need this alpha over uh, image to go into the final alpha over image. Now our explosions are the exact same. So what we can do is actually uh, scale and rotate it. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to do my uh, big explosion. I'm going to add a scale node. Uh, this is going to be scaled to a, uh, let's see, a 
And then we also need to actually move the explosion around so it's uh, in a location that we want. Uh, so a way we can do that is actually add in a translate node. Uh, and this basically just translates uh, whatever we're plugging into it, which is the explosion, uh, a certain amount of pixels. So I'm just going to play around with this value until I get it around this area. So we actually just need to increase the X just a bit, let's say 33. Okay, so I am actually going to uh, play around with these values until I get it in a location you uh, I like. Uh, but for you, just play around with it until you uh, see where you want the actual explosion to be. Okay, so now that we have those, I'm going to do the exact same thing with our other explosion. Uh, now this is going to be a smaller explosion, so I'm just going to duplicate these, bring those down here, and plug these uh, sockets in the correct locations. Now for the scale of this one, I'm going to set it down to a 0.5. Uh, and then the translate, these are the values I chose for my translate, uh, but again, if you just want to play around with the uh, location of the actual explosion, uh, feel free to make your own values. Now one thing that we need to do is that these explosions are actually the exact same explosion, uh, so if they go off side by side and they the same way, they'll look uh, like they're fake in the same explosion. Uh, so what I like to do is actually flip the explosion, so let's just go ahead and add in a flip node. Uh, this will basically flip it on the X axis, uh, so it'll flip it uh, around to be the other side. Okay, so now that we have both of the explosions composited together, we also need to add in our planes flying over. So let's just go ahead and bring those all the way down here. Uh, grab our planes uh, image sequence. We're gonna drag this up here, and again, we need another alpha over now. So I'm just gonna plug that in between here. Uh, and then we just need to plug in the image socket of our plane to the other image socket of our alpha over. So now if we come to a frame, which we can actually see the planes, uh, mine is 301. We can see that the planes are actually on top of the explosion, so that is looking good. Uh, so now we're actually done with uh, compositing everything on top of each other. Now one final thing that we need to do to actually make this a little bit more realistic is to actually uh, play around with the colors and make this uh, explosion and the planes actually match our footage a bit better. Uh, so I'm going to come down to where we have both of our explosions. I'm just going to bring this out and then we need to add in a color balance node. I'm just going to drop that in right there. Now in testing, uh, I played around with some of these values. So if you just want to play around and uh, figure it out for yourself, go ahead. Uh, but for me, I am going to change this gain down just a tad. I'm going to increase the gamma just a tad and the lift a bit. Uh, and then to add kind of that bluish hue from the actual fog and everything, uh, I'm going to go ahead and change uh, the color of our lift just a tiny bit towards the blue. Uh, let's see how that looks. Okay, so here is my final color balance node. I basically just lifted the gamma, uh, the lift, and decreased the gain just a tad. Uh, and then in the lift, I actually wanted to brighten this up a bit since it, uh, my sky color is actually a little bit bluish. Uh, so I just increase that a little bit. Uh, now we can just copy and paste this uh, over to our other explosion since it's about the same. Uh, so again, just shift D, duplicate that, place it there. And now if I actually come out to a later uh, frame, we will notice that our planes right here are actually pretty close to our footage. Uh, so I'm not really going to mess around with that for now. One final thing that we have to do uh, is, let's actually zoom in a bit. Uh, we will notice that our big explosion is looking very blurry and stuff, whereas our little explosion uh, actually looks more sharp than the uh, the bigger explosion. Uh, so what I'm just gonna do, uh, this is our smaller explosion down here. I am just going to add a little bit of a blur, uh, not too big, because we don't want it to be too noticeable, but just say one or two, uh, just to give it a little more blur, since uh, it would be more out of focus. And so that is actually everything composited correctly. So let's actually come up here. Uh, we want to make sure that our final node is plugged into the composite node. So uh, plug the stabilized 2D node into the image socket. Now we can actually go ahead and play around with some of our output settings. Uh, so let's go to the output properties, uh, make sure the resolution and frame rate match. Uh, then we need to come over here and uh, do a new location for our video file. Once we have set that, we can actually come down here. The file format, we're going to change this to FFmpeg. Uh, then the container down to uh, mp4 and then for the output quality we're going to set this to high. Now we are actually ready to render our final animation. Okay guys here is the final result that we got from this tutorial. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this tutorial if uh, this was helpful for you guys uh, or if you have any other suggestions for uh, new beginners uh, to compositing. Anyways guys, we have a Patreon and Discord, links to those are in the description below. Also, if you want to download my footage, links to those are also in the description below. Uh, but anyways guys, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Peace.